Hello and welcome to the G-Guard Challenge here on Gosu TV one This is going to be a best of three series between G-Guard Esports and Arcanus. If I'm not mistaken, if Arcanus are able to beat G-Guard, they'll be rewarded with a prize. It may or may not be $500. I have no idea. But either way, it should be entertaining at the very least. I'm Grand SV, casting here on Gosu TV with Coucher as my co-caster. How are you doing? Quite fine. And indeed, this is all for $500. G-Guard themselves, they're pretty much playing this for a practice, be just kind of making a name for themselves. I think this may be a publicity kind of thing, because, well, TI is coming up shortly, so if you can kind of make a name for yourself a little bit more so, showing that you can beat other top tier just Southeast Asian teams, it may be the little bit of a push you need. But of course, for that G-Guard, they still have a lot of teams to beat. It's going to be six matches for now, maybe a seventh one as well. Alrighty, well, the Skype call is absolutely garbage, so hopefully we can uh, get this recall to work. There's definitely an internet connection problem between me and um, Estonia, so let's <laughs> let's try that again, shall we? Um, either way, uh, how are you doing, Coucher? Hopefully this time we can hear you. Is it any better now, or is it still messed up completely? Uh, this is acceptable. Well, acceptable. That's, that's oh, fine no, for it's now. Not anymore. Hopefully it's going to oh, stay that way. Mm. I'm not sure if this is going to hold. I'm going to try hosting the call and we'll see how that's going to work. Skype is uh, definitely finicky sometimes, so hopefully this will work out. Worst case scenario, I'll be solo casting this, but uh, hopefully that's not too bad in and of itself. Either way, um, okay, third time's the charm. Coucher, are you here? Yes, I am here, hopefully. Is it, is it the charm or is it going to go bonkers again? For now, we're holding. So let's hope that we hold, and uh, we can get into this draft. Arcanus Gaming going to ban out the Batrider and Juggernaut first, with Troll first banned by G-Guard. No big surprises here, and probably won't see any big surprises for the first four. With the Axe ban, yeah, th this is looking pretty standard all around. Yeah, and now for the first pick, it's likely to be a support, starting with maybe a Vengeful, maybe a Lion. Just because the other stronger heroes are banned out. Depending on the team, you can also start with like a straight out Storm Spirit, although that's probably a little bit too risky for most teams, I'd say. So I I'm definitely expecting just support to come out here. Yeah, probably something along the lines of a Lion, Venge, Witch Doctor, Earthshaker, one of those four. Just really good standard supports. If Arcanus Gaming are going to pick up something, not one of those four heroes, um, it's probably just going to be something safe, or since it's available, maybe they even go for the Sniper. Although there's a lot of heroes in the pool that could jump the Sniper the G-Guard would have available to them. If Arcanus draft around it, it could work out pretty nicely for them. But for the time being, they're going to take their time, and uh, we'll start eating through their reserve. It's going to be Queen of Whoa. Pain first for them. I mean, Queen of Pain has been a hell of a popular hero lately, but I don't think I've seen Queen of Pain being first picked, even by teams who play that hero fairly often. So, I'm interested to see what Arcanis will do with this, whether their entire lineup will be aggressive now, or maybe it's just the Queen of Pain to get a little bit of mid-game control, because the burst power is real, getting one pick off at the start of the fight is extremely easy with that hero. Yeah, Queen of Pain for the sake of Queen of Pain is definitely not a bad choice coming out from Arcanis, and uh, I don't think it really gives away too much, but it's definitely punishable. I think G-Guard... Uh, it would be wise to pick up something with an instant disable, something along the lines of a lion first would be really nice for them. And uh, pretty easy to build around, just to punish Queen of Pain and maybe force her to go into a BKB first, which is always suboptimal. Have you, by the way, seen G-Guard in action recently? Because I haven't seen them for quite some time, they haven't been playing in as many tournaments. I know Winter, for example, he used to love Center War Runner, like, that's the hero he played most, hands down, more or less, for the offlane. Do you believe G-Guard may be popped the center war on her, although I have to say I can't even remember the last time I saw that hero. If they do, I'd expect it to be a little bit later on in the draft. If they're going to prioritize the hero for winter early on, it's probably going to be a clockwork for him, but uh, either way, we'll just have to see later on the line what they settle on. For now, it's going to be an Earthshaker and a pretty solid support he is to... With a long-range disable, you can set up for some kills under the Queen of Pain, especially if you're ganking for somebody along the lines of Alina. With a lot of burst damage and a follow-up disable, would be a decent mid laner for G-Guard. So for now, G-Guard, they are going to go for a Zeus second pick. Of course, Zeus can be played in both the support as well as the mid role. Every now and then, it's going to be even played in the offlane, which probably is the least favorite for me at least, but 
Zeus has a lot of burst, that's for sure. I mean, getting more burst is kind of hard than the Zeus Prince because your R, your Thunder God's Wrath, it's just guaranteed damage, more or less, unless, of course, targets are BKB, but preemptively BKB being a Thunder God's Wrath, definitely not the easiest thing to do, even if you have a BKB to begin with. So, of course, Zeus does have the mini stuns, may help out against just killing off the Queen of Pain before she blinks out. Or at least buying enough time for like a Fisher to land, maybe Yoshi could run close for an Enchant Totem stun. Arcanist okay, though. Highly likely that there is support will be coming out. Vengeful and Lion, two of the more popular supports, still open. Yeah, for sure. Although Zeus isn't going to offer as much disable as like Alina, it still brings a lot of damage to the table. It is going to be Avenger we're talking about. And uh, right now both teams have a pretty reasonable opener and uh, pretty much mirroring each other. They both have a pretty nice defensive support with a setup stun and a mid laner that's going to offer a lot of mid-game damage. Although there's differences in the amount of initiation on either side, especially Arcanus with a little bit of a better jump with a blinking Queen of Pain and a potential swap into Magic Missile from them. Uh, I think that this opener is more or less completely standard from either side. We're going to see Chen and Shadowfiend, the second stage, bans out from either side. Uh, maybe Arcanus are expecting the Zeus to go towards the offlane or played as a support, or maybe they're just scared of a safe lane Shadowfiend. Yeah, I think we're completely screwed with the call now, or...? It's getting pretty bad. Yeah, it, it went red for a little while with me, now it went back to white. I don't know, it's, it's messed up. For game number two, I can say for sure that Danely will be joining you, so... Yay for that at least, no more Skype issues for game two, and if it's getting really bad, I think it's probably better to just leave you solo rather than have the viewers just listen to, I don't know, whatever sounds I'm making. Well, for sure. We'll see how it goes through the draft, and hopefully it holds. So we do have a co-caster for game number one, but uh, either way, we're going to see Morphling banned out by Arcanus. At the moment, their lockdown is not very reliable against a Morphling. Magic Missile is pretty easily waveformed, and eventually Morph is going to get his hands onto something along the lines of a Mantis style, so Queen of Pain isn't going to bother him that much. Um, and even so, it might just show that they're not looking to pick up any further disables than that, and get pretty greedy with their next couple of picks. Um... But either way, wouldn't have been a bad pick for G-Guard either, um, in any case, excuse me. So, do, do you even think we're going to see any kind of exotic heroes here coming out, or is it just standard all the way? Of course, I have to mention that Southeast Asian, or for them, standard... ...is a little bit different than standard in the other scenes. <laughs> it looks like Skype is uh, completely gone, so... I don't know. We'll just have to chill. Could have been an offlane Morphling as well that Arcanus were scared of and just afraid of G-Guard massing CC. With a Zeus already, the damage follow-up to a Morphling jump in with that 4 second stun of Adaptive Strike. Um, there is more than enough to get kills throughout the game. It's going to be a disruptor for G-Guard. Their supporting duel, although fairly defensive, is really good at what it does. A uh, lot of mid-game teamfight contribution there between the Static Storm and all of Earthshaker's CC. They have a lot of control, although they are fairly damaged light, and Arcanus could potentially get away with a pretty greedy offlaner because of it. Something along the lines of a Phoenix, maybe, is something they could end up considering. The Queen of Pain going towards offlane is probably unlikely, since G-Guard do have the Disruptor, and uh, maybe the Phoenix would end up getting stonewalled by the Glimpse, but actually Arcana is going to pick up a Lich for themselves. Hmm, pretty interesting. Looks like they just want to buckle down these lanes really hard, but it is going to leave them fairly CC light against a Storm. It's going to be picked up by G-Guard. Um, in the middle lane, Queen of Pain does pretty well against Storm Spirit 1v1, and in the end, it's more or less just Orchid Wars coming out from both of them. Whoever gets it first does have solo kill potential against the other, and about that mid-game timing window. And, well, this next pick going to come up really quickly as well for Arcanus with the Faceless Void, a carry that we haven't seen very often. I have no idea where they're going to lane it. I'd assume safe lane for now, um, but a Lich Faceless Void offlane wouldn't be the worst thing. Let's see. It's going to set up for a lot of damage coming out from the Queen of Pain, boosted by the Vengeful Spirit's Vengeance or a Minus Armor from Wave as well. Going to give them a lot of hard disable, but then again, G-Guard are not without their ways to jump onto the Void, so it is going to be a game about who gets initiation off first. And, uh, well, that could be pretty interesting to go ahead and watch. Looks like Coucher is going to restart his router. Hopefully that's going to fix this out so you don't have to listen to just me through the duration of the first game. And, uh, well, let's see if he's back and let's see if the internet holds. Um, 
fifth, fourth time. I don't know what it is. Maybe this works. Yeah, fourth time now. I oh dear, it's it's, it's work. not working. It's oh, really it's... not working. Okay, then. Well, I, I guess we're screwed then. Okay. Um, well, I think that means I'm going to have to say goodbye to Coucher for the first game, and uh, we'll be back with uh, Kilcaster for game number two. So Danley should be joining me there. Um, I don't know. Skype is really finicky. Sometimes it just does not cooperate. But either way, uh, we'll just go ahead and finish out this draft with uh, Beastmaster and Medusa banned out by either side. G-Guard are lacking their safe lane farmer. At the moment, Arcanus wouldn't have the greatest of tools to deal with Dusa, although maybe we get to see a Diffusal Manta-style build for the Faceless Void. Can do a lot of damage to Dusa in the duration of the Chrono. It's not necessarily something you want to be going for. G-Guard afraid of... Some mid-game teamfight coming out from Arcanus. We're actually going to have a Bristleback last for G-Guard. Although they don't have a traditional carry, the combination of Stormstrait and Bristle can do a lot of damage and get a lot done throughout the game. And Faceless Void might have difficulty focusing them both down in the duration of Chrono, in particular the Bristleback himself. And last pickup for Arcanus is going to be a Nyx Assassin. Alright, so with that all covered, uh, we'll jump into this game. And, uh, well, this is game number one of the G-Guard Challenge. G-Guard versus Arcanus. Should be a pretty good one. Alrighty, let's uh, go ahead and take a minute to look at these theoretical lanes. Should be a uh, Zeus mid with a safe lane Storm and an off lane Bristleback, but there is a lot of lane flexibility there. If they want to go for the Zeus off lane, they might be able to get away with it without the Zeus absolutely getting destroyed. He should be able to soak some experience as long as he keeps himself safe from the magic missile of the Venge and uh, just getting run down by the Faceless Void. There's no clear position to throw this Lich, however, for Arcanus. I'm not exactly sure how these lanes are going to shake down for them. Maybe they just want to buckle down and punish the Storm Spirit in mid lane and throw him there with the Queen of Pain. It would be a pretty miserable time to be the Storm Spirit in that case. I suppose I'll just go ahead and introduce our teams as we'll uh, just have to see how these lanes develop. For the Radiant side, it's going to be Arcanus with Einrich playing on the Nyx Assassin and Whiskers on the Vengeful Spirit, Mighty Odin on the Queen of Pain, Play Hard on the Faceless Void, Jabriel Ramos on the Lich. For the Dire side, it is G-Guard and uh, well, right now they're just playing for practice. It's going to be Winter on the Zeus, Yamate on the Storm Spirit. I believe that's Net on the Earth Shaker with Ling on the Disruptor and Ben on the Bristleback. Smoke going to be bought very early on by the Earth Shaker, just loading out with all of the support stuff. Is they'll send Winter towards the off lane on the Zeus, opening up with Boots first. This is probably the way to go if you're going into the off lane as a Zeus. Now let's see what lane he's going to be up against. Hmm, looks like. Just a Vengeful Spirit and Nyx Assassin, or is this Nyx going mid? A lot of lane shuffling going on. In fact, it looks like it is going to be Nyx mid. Look at his opening items, two pulled tangos and a magic stick, expecting some sort of spamming mid to be there. Even against the Storm Spirit, it's not terrible to open up with a magic stick, um, but maybe they were expecting G-Guard to throw the Zeus there. But either way, that's where he's probably going to stay, and a pretty interesting development too coming out from Arcanus. Mighty Odin also has items that would allow him to go into mid pretty easily. I honestly have no idea where these heroes are going to end up. Uh, maybe it depends on who gets the bounty rune or what's going to happen there. For the time being, no major movements coming out from either side towards either bounty runes. Disruptor is sitting over on the high ground up towards top. Looks like they want to fissure block off the bounty in that spot. Although Faceless Void would have a time walk available to jump over that. They should be able to stun him out and keep him off of this rune. Playhard is going to decide better of contesting this bounty and ends up backing out. Uh, with a lot of enemy heroes close by. Nyx Assassin going to get the bounty rune down towards bottom, so it looks like he is going to be going towards the mid lane with the bottle rush for him. Uh, whereas the Storm Spirit gets the bounty top, so mid lane is going to be pretty even when it comes to the starting gold, but then again, um, the Nyx Assassin is going to get his bottle faster and have a pretty reliable time in mid. This mid lane matchup is not one that I've seen in recent memory, although Mana Burn is going to be a constant nuisance to, nuisance to Yamate. I think that the Nyx Assassin is going to be at a uh, slight disadvantage. Up towards top, this dual lane with the Faceless Void and the Lich should operate pretty nicely against the Bristleback and the Disruptor lane. Not much that the Disruptor can actually do to zone off the Faceless Void, and the Lich is going to be a lot more annoying to Ben than the Disruptor is to the Arcanist side. Zeus down towards bottom, bottom probably not going to die until more levels come up for Mighty Odin eventually. 
Uh, there is killing potential from both teams if they rotate in some of their supports, but for the time being, the Earthshaker is nowhere close. He's made his way all the way back to base after Fissure blocking off the Creep Wave. So Winter is just going to be a straight-up offlane Zeus. You might be able to get level 2 from this pull if, uh, well, that <clears throat> Creep ends up giving him experience, it will. Um, but for the time being, he's just trying to soak to his best of ab his ability. G-Guard are getting a decent amount of mid lane against the next Assassin, but the other two lanes uh, really aren't looking that great for them. The Bristleback isn't getting as much farm as he'd like to, given safe lane farm. We'll just have to see how that dissolves as time progresses, but the status quo is looking pretty nice for Arcanus. The next Assassin, even though he'd love to get some farm, get Arcane Boots up and what have you, uh, really all that he needs is levels. He's going to stun out Yamate, looking for the Impale, not going to find it. He doesn't have another Carapace, and it's going to be right-clicked very heavily with the Fissure coming in from the left. I'm right going to be chased down, and well, he's completely gone, but it's actually the Lich to be first blood, as he's killed off by Jabriel Ramos. Eventually, the kill in mid is going to happen. Didn't see anything of that kill onto the Lich, but I can only expect that it was just Disruptor giving him the guff with the Static Charge dropped onto him. He's going to get bashed by Faceless Void and taking a lot of damage. Time walk forward as he goes strong into Ling. Play Art is eventually going to get that kill, or at the very least an assist, as Lich comes in with the Frost Blast to secure it. Ben still trading blows with the Faceless Void, gets bashed as they bring in a Fissure from the hasted Earthshaker. They bash down Playhard. Playhard with one stack of the goo is pretty low, but they don't have enough mana and health to continue that chase in a bloodbath of traded blows in the top lane. Quite a mess there. Stormfair continues to farm in mid, 14 and 9 compared to the Nyx's 6 and 1, and really this is such a low CS game, all things considered, except for Yamate. Another Carapace is going to be annoying to the storm, but my goodness, I don't think I expected this. At the very least, so much action. Uh, with lanes that would appear on face value to be pretty passive. Their killing potential is uh, very limited unless they get into these slugfests. Ben is operating pole for himself. Doesn't look like it's going to be successful in killing off any of his creeps. But it uh, doesn't matter. He farms up a full big camp for himself without dropping any HP. Completely worth it even though uh, it doesn't offer the same benefit that a normal pull does. Hmm. Things have slowed down a little bit. Yamate dropping low in mid, but with his bottle flying out, he shouldn't end up dying. Nyx Assassin is uh, just blocking himself, and if he does go aggressive, there is a fissure from friendly Earthshaker to help bail out the Storm Spirit. Zeus was sent all the way back to base, his winter uh, really not having the greatest of times, but, it's, but he has his Tranquil Boots and three Clarities on his person, so he'll be able to sustain himself in mana. For all intents and purposes, he's operating as a support Zeus at uh, the same level as the Disruptor. There's going to be a mana burn in mid. Yamate isn't going to get stunned out by that. The Fissure Block, unfortunately, is on the wrong side, but will they be able to pull him over it? No, unfortunately, only level 1 pull, not long enough distance in order to get him over that gap. If it did, it would have been a pretty easy kill for G-Guard. Unfortunate from both sides, but at the very least worth going for it. Impale going to connect on to poor Nat as the bounty rune is picked up by the Earthshaker himself, actually. Einrich not going to be able to get it. He has nine stick charges and a spike carapace. He might be able to get out of this one alive. Pops the nine sticks. The spike carapace is yet to be thrown out. He is going to carapace, turn around for an impale, lands on uh, to both of them. But there is no help. In the meantime, up towards top, the Bristleback kills off the Lich as Ling is getting bashed down by Playhard. But unfortunately for him, no time locks as Ling is able to just waddle out of there, even with the Orb of Venom. Time lock forward, Playhard going hard. But isn't going to be able to secure that kill. Glimpsed back into the creep wave. Going to take a lot of harass. The kinetic field as well. Where is any assistance at all? The Earthshaker is way too low. The Bristleback is way too low. And in the end, there's no follow-up for that. And Ling probably going to have to make his way back to base too. Even though they get that kill, it's going to cost them some time on the lane. Arcanus are consistently getting a little bit of gold advantage across all these lanes with just the amount of farm that they have, but this is mitigated by the fact that G-Guard have gotten a lot of kills. I feel a sneeze coming on, so I might have to mute my mic for a second, um, but hopefully we don't miss any kills in the meantime, or maybe it's just going to peter out as sometimes sneezes do. Um, let's see, Whiskers looking potentially for a magic missile onto Winter. If he crosses this line, could be in a bit of a pickle. But for the time being, the chain lightning, or rather arc lightning distance, is keeping him safe as he just gets a couple of CS here and there. They're going to blink forward, get a scream, but Winter's a little too fast with those tranquil boots. The ultimate's going to be popped. Is Winter going to be able to survive throughout this? The damage should be enough in order to kill him off. Nobody's coming for the deny, and Winter can do nothing but stand there and die. Storm Spirit's going to join the phrase. He goes strong into Mighty Odin. He's going to be able to bring down the Queen of Pain as a return kill for the team. Although Zeus doesn't get experience for that, he really would have loved to. It's still a good trade, all things considered, for G-Guard, only losing a level 4 Zeus, and 
Although that's unfortunate in all, they're not losing anything in mid either when it comes to experience. His Earthshaker is soaking there. And Bill's going to connect, but Heinrich doesn't have his ultimate, so actually killing off this Earthshaker by himself is pretty difficult in all honesty. The Storm Spirit's going to drop his bottle off onto Zeus as he comes in with the TP. And uh, we'll get a free bottle refill, looking for the Bounty Rune in bottom. Is also going to get a bottle refill there, and this is a happy storm currently at... Uh, tops of the mana and now can look for some kills potentially, although maybe it's going to be Arcanus to make the first move. There's Vendetta online. The high ground vision ward might spot it used if they go for it. They'll drop a word for themselves. The both teams do have vision of the radiant high ground. Storm Spirit still hasn't made his move from bottom as Yamate is still lurking. Hmm. A little bit of a potential for aggression on a lot of these spots for both teams. But uh, really nothing clear. The Vengeful Spirit's going to rotate back in as Yamate looks for vision on to Mighty Odin. Taking a lot of harass, the Queen of Pain could be in some trouble. Two points in the pool. Yamate could potentially go for that kill, but they don't know where the Venge is. Eventually they find her spotted out by the Remnant Vision. They'll jump in and the damage is more than enough as Whiskers is soloed up by Yamate. With Zeus offering just a little bit of help to steal that kill away from Yamate. Winter is going to be really happy that he's involved in that as that propels him towards level 5 on the Zeus. In the meantime, we lose the Bristle back up towards top, and it's not over yet as they go for Ling. They are going to get a Frost Blast and one auto attack from the Faceless Void. Jabril Ramos is dropping low throughout all of us. A right click damage from Disruptor, is it enough? No, he's going to survive on 4 HP. TP's out to safety as nobody's actually there to finish him off. One Quills. From the Bristleback would have been enough. Really awkward exchange there. Storm Spirits made his way back down towards bottom. Yamte going to zip forward. Gets vision of Mighty Odin. But he'll be able to blink out to safety as they TP in the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit's going to eat some remnant damage on the way in. Um, but for the time being, a really awkward duel lane or duel lane of sorts. Earthshaker's managed to find himself level 4. At the very least will after this next creep kill. Inside the mid lane with the absence of the Storm Spirit. But maybe Yamate could be getting a little bit more farm elsewhere. It's still unclear what his build is going to be for now. He just has the standard stuff with Power Tread, Soul Ring, and a bottle at this point in the game is more than enough to get kills as he has already shown. He's going to stick around in mid for upwards of two minutes as he gets the rune there as well. It's an invis. Maybe this can set something up for Yamate. Mm, even with the Storm Spirit trying to make as much space for the team as he can. They're not getting very much farm on the bristle back up top. Only 20 CS at 8 minutes in is pretty lackluster. They will steal a stack of creeps out. This is pretty big economic damage done by G-Guard. Even though it's only a double stack, it's really nice for Yamate to have that available to him uh, without actually having to put in the work. The Nyx Assassin is yet to rotate off of the mid, although Heinrich does have his level 6 and, well, now almost level 8. And there, he does have level 8. He has yet to use a Vendetta and yet to look for a kill. It's not the easiest of uh, games to look for kills, except for maybe up top when Ben is caught out by three. With the face of Floyd time walking in, they'll even commit a Chain Frost for it. And they'll be able to get that kill, but a Zeus Ultimate returns and kills off the Lich. With so many stacks of quills sticking onto a hero with very little armor, especially since Lich does not have his Tranquil Boots, it's uh, going to turn into a 1-1. It could have been a really easy pickoff for Arcanus. Doesn't end up mattering. Could have gone a lot worse if they didn't commit the chain frost for it. Vengeful Spirit probably would have gotten another stack of quills on her and might have been put into lethal range. Storm Spirit going to rotate down towards bottom with the health of the Earth Shaker. There's no radiant vision down in this bottom lane, and Queen of Pain might be feeling pretty safe, but is she safe enough? Mighty Odin smells something's up and backs off behind the tier one tower. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like nothing's going to happen there. Storm Spirit looks to farm up the enemy woods. Are they actually stacking this themselves? But uh, either way, unfortunately, Mud Golems for him is going to slow down his farm inside uh, that medium camp. Really, I'd love to see this Nyx Assassin get active around the map. It's a hero that is innately aggressive, but uh, really just not doing much of this game for them. Or at the very least, he hasn't yet, except for dying twice. They'll go ahead and stack the Ancients, presumably for Bristleback to farm up. He doesn't even have his Power Treads, however. It's still possible for him to do so with Quill Stacks and maybe with a little bit of assistance from the rest of his team. Uh, unfortunately for them, it looks like that stack failed. Oh no, it did uh, go through. They have two Rumble Hides in there. Or Thunder Hides, rather. Alrighty, G-Guard have completely left the top half of their map unfarmed. For the time being, they should probably look to remedy that fact, and Arcanists are grouped up down towards bottom. Mm, not sure if the Dire Observer Ward inside the woods over in that vicinity ended up spotting out this rotation, but Playheart is sitting on a Chronosphere, and maybe they can make something happen on anybody that shows their face. Time Walking to Chrono is a pretty 
Easy initiation, especially under the likes of Winter. Looks like Winter's going to be going for a hand of Midas on this Zeus, and it would be really unfortunate for him if he ended up dying. Uh, let's see how much of his gold is unreliable. Okay, not that much. You wouldn't lose that much, but um, still any penny counts when you're saving up for that <clears throat> extra gold item that is the hand of Midas. We'll turn this rotation into a straight push. The Zeus ultimate's going to spot out the... <clears throat> Faceless Void as he gets pinged out. Blayhard was waiting to look for that initiation. Instead, he's going to TP up towards top and look to make something happen there. In the end, it devolves into something of just a tower trade that the Radiant team are a little bit ahead of when it comes to the damage since they got there first. They're going to TP in the Nyx Assassin currently under the guise of Vendetta. Looks like he wants to make something happen, and, uh, well, if he catches out poor Ling, Ling could very easily become Nyx Assassin bait with only 644 HP on this hero. A lot of posturing by either side, but the kills really have slowed down since the laning stage. This Vendetta, the first one used by the Nyx Assassin, doesn't net them anything. He'll just come in mid, throw an Impale here or there, Mana Burn up the Earth Shaker, but that hardly tickles since he's only sitting on 26 int, and I believe it's only a level 1 Mana Burn too. Yeah, in the end, probably not worth the mana spent by the Nyx Assassin to drop that burn. Up towards top time, lock in, Chronosphere catches out too, where's the damage follow up, it's coming in with the Lich Chain Frost, Ling going to be dropped down very quickly, and Ben's going to get bounced up by that Chain Frost yet again, as Mighty Odin comes in to kill him off, it's going to be a killing spree for Playhard, and that'll tie up the kill score 7-7, seven to seven, as Arcanists are starting to make a pretty significant lead for themselves when it comes to their three cores, although the Storm Spirit is maintaining a similar amount of farm to the Queen of Pain, Yamate isn't really doing enough to warrant the fact that their Bristleback is under farmed, he's died three times, and their Zeus is also not getting much since he is in the off lane. A lot of this just comes down to the lane assignments coming out from G-Guard. Well, even with these poor lanes, they still have heroes that can fight pretty effectively, uh, even without a large amount of farm, so maybe they can make this work out for them, but it is pretty unfortunate. Arcanus is late game, is very scary if Faceless Void gets a lot of items under his belt, although he's not itemizing for it now. The potential that he gets those is definitely there. Queen of Pain is currently sitting through mid, a lot of roaming from either side in this game. Winter is maybe sitting a little too close to bottom, although he has a Disruptor behind him. Disruptor's been spotted out, and well, Playheart's here. He's going to get hit and shocked by that passive coming out from the Zeus, and Winter knows what's up now. Should end up falling back, the Lich is going to come through, spotted out by this dire Observer Ward that has given them a lot of vision of the rotations of Arcanus down towards bottom lane. Not a spot that you generally see warded this early on, but it's working out very nicely for them. Nyx Assassin's first major item is going to be Dagon. It doesn't really feel like he's playing like a Dagon Nyx, but maybe this is going to give him just enough damage in order to get these kills. Zeus Ultimate's going to scout out the Nyx, and my goodness, he's just been stonewalled by the vision of G-Guard. In the meantime, Bristleback is dropping pretty low as he farms up Ancients, but Ben is on the road to recovery on the Bristleback. It kind of feels like at the moment G-Guard are operating with two offlaners instead of actually having... Um, the safe lane farming Bristleback. They might have been better served if they just safely lane farmed up Yamate through the Bristleback towards off and got some more levels and farm on the Zeus, but they're spreading the resources nicely when it comes to experience. The advantage there um, is just a thousand in the favor of Arcanus. His gold is a little bit higher, but I think the bigger issue is just the distribution. Alrighty, TP's in mid as G-Guard come in in droves, looking for a fight, maybe they can kill off Heinrich, they're going to open up with Fissure, just follow up with the Static Storm, and this is the easiest kill of their life, no ability for him to get off that Spike Carapace as Jamate goes for some more, with no vision this could be problematic, but they'll glimpse back the Queen of Pain towards top lane, and now Whiskers is left high and dry, the Vengeful Spirit's alone, but G-Guard at least for the time being don't know this, Jamate is going to hunt behind enemy lines, he has the vision of the Static Remnant, but now that the Creeps see him, he's uh, currently in a bit of a pickle. Going to zip through, going strong into Whiskers, going to get Magic Missile to the face. There's no follow-up, however, coming out from Whiskers' team with a Fissure and a Bolt. The follow-up is there from G-Guards instead. The Lich is currently bottom, and the Queen of Pain never rejoined that fight as she decided that pushing top was a better use of her time. Which it probably is, in all honesty. I'm not going to say that that's a bad choice. What might be a bad choice is her man fighting up against Ben. She's currently losing the fight, but with an ultimate and a blink scream. Could end up killing off this uh, little Warthog pig thing, Bristleback, what have you. The Hand of Midas is now online for Winter, so he's going to be able to get his levels even though he wasn't laned originally in mid. Which is really nice for G-Guard. In all honesty, it's a fine item pickup for him, but we'll have to see if he's able to get away with it um, over the next couple of minutes. We'll just keep an eye on whether or not a 4-staff or a Blink would have served him better.
Nyx Assassin is rotated up towards top with the ultimate coming out from the Queen of Pain and a Dagon on the Nyx. Their burst damage is redonkulous. Heinrich is going to look for a potential solo kill on uh, some of these supports coming out from G Guard if they get caught out stacking a camp. He's going to end up looking behind the tower and will find himself a tasty looking bristleback. Not the easiest of targets to go on by himself, and I don't think Heinrich's. Uh, solo kill potential is just at that point. Yeah, time walk forward in mid is to get a Chrono Sphere on to two. The Static Storm's on to play hard, but that's not going to stop him from getting off the Chrono. They'll be able to Fissure, and the Chain Frost is still uh, bouncing through. The next Assassin comes in, blows Ling sky high. One for two trade. It's still alright, since that is an offlaner for offlaner plus support. Um, but I think at this point the Faceless Void's a little bit more important than the Zeus either way. Zipping from Storm Spirit, he goes on the back lines, pulling back Mighty Odin, but that's not a kill he can get comfortably. Zipping away, Amate is going to survive as a blink forward by the Queen of Pain to pursue him. She has a haste rune, but not enough to actually get this kill, it seems, or at the very least, not enough vision to feel safe doing it. Um, but in the end, Arcanists get a net gain of gold on all their heroes, so by every sense of the trade, they end up getting a pretty favorable one for their team. Mask of Madness now on the void. He can pretty easily kill off heroes alone inside the Chrono, but the follow-up from the Lich and Queen of Pain makes that all the much easier. 9 to 10, our kill score really has uh, been pretty stagnant for a while. Arcane is slightly edging out G-Guard, but by no means does either team have a super huge advantage, especially since neither of them have gotten major map control. Uh, the wording vision from <clears throat> Arcanus is pretty generic, but spots out a lot of the rotations coming out from G Guard and pretty similar uh, for Arcanus's words. Uh, really, both teams have a very similar idea of what they need to be doing at this point, and that's uh, looking for fights that they can take on their own terms in this mid game. Nyx Assassin has really been less than active. The only kill he's gotten is that one kill onto the Disruptors, so I think that this hero could have been something else for Arcanus. I wonder why they ended up. Settling on Nyx. It kind of seems that he's been underperforming as of late, but maybe he can start getting active. Little TP and net to the tier 1 tower. He's alone, but they spot him out with a sentry word, if I'm not mistaken. He walks up into the woods. This uh, shouldn't actually catch anybody out. I don't expect Winter to be caught out by that gink. He should know that the Nyx Assassin is prowling, but where is he prowling? Reinrich is going to end up meandering towards top. The sentry vision for the tower isn't there in the top lane. This is a potential death onto Winter of Brewing, as there could be a fight in mid shortly. Winter's going to TP back to base, and, uh, well, that's going to be the end of it all. <laughs> really not much else to talk about. This rotation from the Nyx Assassin's Vendetta is, yet again, going to be uh, pretty fruitless. Queen of Pain's first item. Looks like she's going to be going for a Scythe of Vice. I don't expect this to be a Lincoln Sphere, although usually it probably would be. Uh, this game, they have the Bristleback on the enemy team. One of the best heroes at popping that Lincoln's time lock down towards bottom into a Chronos for Yamate is the damage there. It'll drop a Chain Frost into Frost Blast. Yamate looks like he's able to zip out of this, however. He's going to zip towards the side, drop a Remnant. He has a Soul Ring and another zip if he really needs to get out of here, but I don't even think he needs to. He's going to turn and fight for Playhard, pulling it back with a Fissure follow up over in the sidelines for Net. Playhard's bitten off way more than he could chew with the Soul Booster. Incredibly tanky, Yamate. And, uh, well, he's going to try to TP out. Heinrich looking to cancel this one. The double damage Vendetta hit. Ooh, not enough damage. Damage. Heinrich doesn't go for the impale, probably should have, although I'm not sure he knew how long that was channeling. Either way, the Echo Slam committed and the Static Storm. Heinrich going to be turned around upon the Queen of Pain, drops the Sonic Wave over the two supports. Although it's going to drop them low, it's not quite enough to get lethal damage onto her, trying to get in range for a screen, but can't do it since he's glimpsed back all the way back towards the rest of his team. They'll try to spot out the Earthshaker, but he's long since TP'd home as it makes it back to safety. 9 to 12, and G Guard take a very favorable engagement. Link's going to be dropped to about 90 HP by the tick damage coming out from the Queen of Pain, but far from lethal. He'll waddle his way back to base. Um, sorry for not looking at that fight recap longer. Um, I'll go ahead and pull that up again since I can. Apologies. It is going to be a pretty big gold swing towards G-Guard, however. Tying things up or um, getting close to tying things up, however. The farm is still in Arcanus's favor, but it doesn't seem like it's transitioning into any super useful items. Okay, so it actually is a Lincoln Sphere for Mighty Odin. This is going to be really nice against the Storm Spirit once he gets an Orchid, although that's a long ways away, but inside a team fight proper, although it's really nice to block a couple of spells coming out from G-Guard, uh, more than anything, this is just going to be stats. There's so many good Lincoln's poppers on G-Guard's side. The Arc Lining from the Zeus, the Snot coming out from the Bristleback, and, uh, well, uh, 
the uh, oh my goodness thunderstrike i actually couldn't for the life of me remember what that was called um but it is going to be a lot less effective than it is in other games i would have liked to see a bkb if queen of pain is going for a defensive item and honestly i think uh, going for that scythe or orchid herself uh, might have been a little bit more effective in mid lane Heinrich going to be dropped low glimpse back into a kinetic field static storm Heinrich down that's going to be one five and zero on the Knicks. It really feels like he just can't get any momentum. Long zip in behind the tower from Yamate. He has a regeneration rune. Let's see how well he can use it. He's going to get magic missile on return. But uh, with that bloodstone running now, operating with another charge, he's going to be really happy. Pops the regeneration rune and is now ready to get back in this fight at a moment's notice. He's going to be sitting on this high ground, pinged out. By the Earth Shaker, there's nobody close, however, Arcanists aren't going to fall for this trap, but it's still really good for G Guard. That's the first fight that they take with the Bloodstone completed on the Storm, and now he's sitting at 9 charges. Primed and ready over in the sidelines. Shawante can make a really long jump into this fight. If Playhard ever decides to go for the Chrono, maybe he can just go into the back lines and assassinate a handful of heroes. Um, most importantly, like the Queen of Pain. Although by himself, that's actually pretty hard because of the Lincoln Sphere. Which uh, is probably why the item's still alright. Alrighty, G Guard. Going to fall back, they decide against going for it, but now they have vision of the Nyx Assassin, or do they have vision? Okay, yeah, they do. They have the sentry on the ground a little bit further to the south. They know exactly where he is, or at the very least, where he's nearby. Ling drops the sentry inside the lane. The Swarm Spirit, it's there to zip in at a moment's notice. If this Nyx Assassin falls for the Disruptor bait, he's going to go for it. They're going to drop a Static Storm, or not a Static Storm, just a Kinetic Field. The Heinrich's already down. The damage from Yamate is immense. He ends up dying to the Creeps. But the Disruptor survives. The Nyx Assassin really just can't do anything because of the sentry coverage coming out from G-Guard. Their vision is impeccable, and uh, really, he just can't find any momentum. What they are getting in the meantime, however, is a Tier 1 tower in mid, but they don't even get the last hit for that, as Ben's going to smack that Say No and pop an invis and get ready to jump in. He currently is sitting on Vanguard Ogre Club. This Warthog Pig Bristle thing is really darn tanky for G-Guard. And is fight ready. More surprising is that Nat has a blink dagger on top of his arcanes at 22 minutes in. By no means is this the most farm you're going to see on an earth shaker, but it's also very respectable. He's been giving a lot or given a lot of room by his team to farm up in mid as the Sword and Spirit looks for kills, and he's also 1-0 and 7. Not to take anything away from Nat, he's been playing pretty well on the CS. Now with the Blink Echo Slam initiation at the ready, also level 2 Echo Slam, they could be in a lot of trouble. Play hard, going to look for a Bash in mid, doesn't find it. He's going to instead Chronosphere off Winter. The follow-up damage is coming in there from Jabriel J or Ramos, excuse me, and well, they will be able to get that pick. It's a pretty important one, but in the meantime, their mid laners getting jumped in and bottom Heinrich going to be 1-7, and seven. this Nyx Assassin. He's getting caught out alone. They'll look for a deny in, bon or in the bottom tier 1, but Mario not able to make that happen as Disruptor gets the tower destruction of all things. A pretty even trade across the map, in all honesty. Zeus for Nyx Assassin sounds alright. And a Blink Echo Slam. They're going to turn on the Mighty Odin with follow-up coming out from Yamate. They'll be able to bring him down. Using that Thunderstrike to pop the Lincoln, Yamate is able to pull her back and pick up a Mega Kill Spree and his 12th Bloodstone charge of the game. This is a really happy Storm Spirit. He's getting so much mana sustained, and a Storm Spirit with near or um, almost infinite mana is a really happy Storm indeed. Um... Yeah, at this moment, Arcanists are really finding a difficult time locking down the entire team of G-Guard. Lich is going to be flying out to himself a hand of Midas, but although this is going to get the Lich a lot of experience and probably propel him towards his future items, I think a Force Staff would have helped them more, but uh, really this kind of feels like Arcanists are just uh, trying to suck out any amount of gold that they can in the map. Looks like his next item of choice is going to be either a pipe, um, which is probably going to be it, or a mechanism. Um, but either way, maybe just going towards the pipe or mech first could have been better. Looks like Arcanists just don't want to fight right now. Uh, probably because their Nyx Assassin just hasn't done anything. Einar, he got this dag and it got him one kill on a Disruptor, but that's not enough to warrant a pick, especially when you've died seven times. Hmm. At this point, I'm not sure you can really activate the Nyx Assassin in anything meaningful. Just build into some utility for the team, and maybe Arcanus can pull through with her Faceless Void and Queen of Pain, who are both doing decently well for themselves. Queen of Pain now with another Ultimate Orb should be going towards the Scythe now, and maybe just maybe they can set up a kill with the Nyx, but they spotted him out again! Man, this Zeus Ultimate, every time Heinrich wants to do something, is scouting him out. It's probably done that three times, and every time it wasn't a Zeus Ultimate, it ends up being a Sentry Ward or Observer Ward in lane. Now with the Zeus Ulti down on cooldown, Play hard, Whiskers and uh, Jabril Ramos are going to look for a rotation into the enemy woods with a fresh Chronosphere up with the ultimate coming out from the Lich. They have a lot of damage and maybe this is going to catch G-Guard off guard. 
However, they're grouped up as a five-man unit. If they jump here, it's going to be a 3v5 fight, and that probably isn't going to go well for them. They'll decide against it. They spot out one too many heroes, or at the very least, they spot a hero that they can't actually kill. Ben has BKB, and now he's going to change very hard into the bench. He's leading for the team. There's vision from long range, going to catch out this bench. Nicely placed by Net. Long zip in. Storm Spirit going to get himself a kill and another Bloodstone charge for himself. They'll chase for a little bit more. The faceless void is over in the sidelines looking for a chrono. He's going to drop it and jump in. Link's going to be focused down hard with the Queen of Pain coming in with Sonic Wave landing on a two. Trying to focus down Yamate. They'll get him. But now with the Echo Slam, they'll turn around. It's a double kill for him as the Bristleback has gone untouched. Two for four is the trade. Can the Queen of Pain make it out alive? Mighty Odin going to try to TP out. There's not a Fissure available or a Blink Enchant Totem from Earth Shaker. Both on cooldown for a little bit longer. But even so, although they kill off the storm, and that's an important kill for Arcane, especially when you look at the experience. In fact, it's a favorable trade when it comes to that XP for their team, since they um, did kill off the storm and get his spree. The only one that really benefits from that is the Queen of Pain, whereas for G Guard, they're going to be pretty happy how that went. And also, Arcanus, that was them trying to open up a fight first. It was a pretty awkward angle of initiation coming out from the. Faceless Void, he ends up sticking himself in these trees. He gets a decent Chrono, to be fair. They're able to focus down both of those heroes inside the Chrono, but now G-Guard are going to look for a little bit more. Yamte with the DD rips apart the Venge, and now looks for Jabriel Ramos. Jabriel Ramos is going to be dropped down with the Zeus Ultimate, too. It's a double kill for Yamate, and it's here one tower. After the fact, why not? He has a BKB and plenty of mana to get himself down to the low ground, so there's no ability to kill him, although the Nyx Assassin tried to come into that tower and maybe help. The Vengeful Spirit just died too fast. Double damage rune on Storm is uh, pretty ridiculous. He's sitting on a lot of base damage. It's not something you immediately think about when you look at Storm's... But, uh, really looking pretty good. Either way, Roshan going to be attempted by G-Guard, and, well, not attempted, but uh, more or less just taken. With the Minus Armor coming out from the Bristle back and the damage of uh, the remainder of that DD rune and just the right clicks coming out from Bristle, they'll be able to go in. Pretty interesting that they actually give that Aegis to Ben. I would have thought that Storm Spirit would have been a better, better carrier. Not only is he um, a little bit easier to kill if they focus him down, he's able to do a lot more with that second life. Um, I think that... Uh, it might be a mistake, but we'll just have to see how they're going to play these fights. They did try opening up with the Bristleback and the engagement while they were running uh, through the woods in about this vicinity. But uh, in the end, they didn't end them that way, as it was the Storm Spirit and the Disruptor to get caught out in the Chrono. Um, well, only time will tell if that's a good decision or a less than optimal decision. If Storm Spirit's able to play perfectly, um, then it's probably fine. Because Yamate will be able to oh no, just skirt around on the outsides of the fight as Bristleback soaks up the attention. Alrighty. Still waiting on the side of the Vice for the Storm Spirit, or maybe Yamate goes for an, uh, Lincoln Spirit for himself. Uh, I have no idea. Either way, the Scythe is now picked up by the Queen of Pain. That is going to make Lincoln's look a lot more attractive for the Storm Spirit. The Zeus Ultimate with Aghanim Scepter going to drop Arcanus very, very low across the map. Although it's not completely maxed out, Winter's Ultimate still doing a lot of work. And it uh, looks like he's going to be building towards a Refresher next. One of the luxuries that going for a Midas offers you. The Vision has really been really nice. Or really has been nice for G-Guard. It's said really like way too many times. And now he's saying like either way. Um, as I stop stumbling over my words, uh, G-Guard have really been on top of the Vision game. With the Zeus Bolts dewarding constantly and uh, just keeping up good tabs on the enemy team. They'll uh, just make sure that they know what Arcanists are doing at any given time, especially this Nyx Assassin. Honestly, I don't think it's the Nyx Assassin playing poorly. He's going for some decent ganks, and his decision-making is alright, but G-Guard are just one step ahead of this Nyx. Tutu Tower in mid's going to be the next push coming out from G-Guard, and it looks like they should be able to take this. Just plunk the Bristleback in the front lines, although Ice Armor is annoying, and the Mana Burn is annoying. Actually, killing them off is another story. They'll pop the Lincolns of the Queen of Pain, and they can consistently do this throughout the fight, but Ben's hardly taking any damage from the tower, although he is now pad out of mana. Which is really unfortunate for a Bristleback. Without having the access to your Goos and Quills, you're a lot less scary a hero. And uh, maybe that's why they gave him the Aegis. They're going to have Arcane Boots, and... A bottle as well in the Bristleback to help sustain through this, but just a couple more mana burns is uh, going to help out draining him. They'll drop an Impale, unfortunately Impale going to miss, but now another mana burn, and that's Bristleback's mana down the drain. 
Oh, jump over in the sidelines looking for the Cronus River, but he can't find it. Play Yard's getting focused down. Although the Sonic Wave connects onto three. There's BKBs on the Storm and onto Ben. Storm going into the back lines trying to assassinate Whiskers. Whiskers down. That's going to be a pretty easy kill. Double kill for Yama taking to get up to the high ground safely. He can. They lose the Aegis onto the Bristleback, but he's in fit fighting shape. He's going to be slowed down by the Queen of Pain, but Yamate's still here with 13 Bloodstone charges. He has plenty of mana to contribute. They'll pop the Lincolns again on the Queen of Pain as, uh, well, poor Nets on, like, no HP. But either way, he's still waiting to contribute a Fissure. It's a zero for two. G-Guard coming out on top, although they do lose their Aegis. That's kind of what it's there for. Impel going to connect on to Ben in mid as Arcanus look to hold this tier two tower. But even if G-Guard back off, it could be fine, especially not when they're, uh, getting caught like this. The Fissure following up with the Static Storm going to blow up too. Really well initiated by G Guard. Now they chase forward for Heinrich. He'll be able to get away, but not away from the glimpse right under the sentry ward. And now G Guard come away with a full five man wipe, although delayed. Man, net sticking around for that fissure really pays off in a big way, catching out two and then following up with Ling's kit. They'll be able to do so much damage and just keep Arcanus completely in check. The Chronosphere was never able to come out in that fight. Basis Void. I'm not sure if he got his BKB off, but there was never an angle for him, even if he um, did. Either way, G-Guard are going to be really happy about that fight and getting the tier 2, but there's also no pressure for them to go into high ground at the moment. Why not just wait for the next Aegis as they're controlling the map and getting more farm uh, than the their counterparts on the side of Arcanus. Although the Queen of Pain has more CS than G-Guard, G-Guard are taking better fights, and that's showing in the net worth graphs now up to 12,000 the advantage for G-Guard, and the experience now up words of 15,000, a little bit more than that in the experience. Earthshaker now going to be working with a Yule Scepter completed. The Refresher is going to be short incoming for the Zeusy, currently sitting on the Oblivion Staff and a Void Stone. The items are coming out for G-Guard, and the same really can't be said for Arcanus, especially the Nyx Assassin. Uh, looks like he's saving up for a Blink Dagger, but uh, really I have no idea what that would actually accomplish for the team. This Dagon's done next to nothing. Now, really, it is sad to see Nyx Assassins do so poorly. It's a hero that I like, and I'd love to see do well, but in professional games, it just seems that oh, they don't get enough momentum. And when they do get momentum, uh, at that point, they just can't push high ground. They turn into more of a utility support. They'll spot out play hard and burst him down as Net comes through big with the Enchant Totem after the uh, level 2 Echo Slam, although it's uh, only a solo Echo, doesn't matter. His supporter Shaker is doing a lot more than support. Storm Spirit zips onto the back lines with Static Storm catching out Whiskers. They'll follow up with the Enchant Totem, although Ling's dropping low with the Chain Frost bounce to him again. It's going to be flying through the air, bounces once more to Yamate, but it's three kills for G-Guard across the map. Cost him a BKB charge on the Storm Spirit, but honestly, I don't think they care. That's 18 Bloodstone charges for Yamate. This guy has gone pretty much unchecked in these fights. He's died once, but Mm, it really doesn't seem to have mattered much in the grand scheme of things. They'll keep on going for the tier 3 tower. Tier 3 tower down a third. Glimpse back to Nyx Assassin at insult to injury. And with the Assault Kiras freshly picked up by Ben. Although it's not there yet. They're just going to go ham. Heinrich's getting jumped under his tier 4 towers. The Queen of Pain is nowhere close. She was looking for a courier kill or something along those lines. Uh, cutting a creep wave behind the enemy tier 2. But the tier 3 tower is already down. Doesn't look like they need any more creeps than what they've already gotten. Backdoor protection is going to set in soon. Maybe. Play hard going to jump in for the Chronosphere on 2. Trying to focus down Yamate with the Sonic Wave. They might be able to do it. Yamate, can he get out of here? He's going to be hexed up. Nice chain stun from Arcanus. They will be able to bring down the giant that is Storm. Now trying to bring down Ben uh, much harder <laughs> with uh, the extra 15 armor from the Assault Cuirass. They'll slow down the Queen of Pain a little bit. And now look to turn. The Enchant Totem's going to miss. Defensive swap from the bench. That's going to cost Miskers his life. Now looking for a little bit more. They're going to slow down Playhard and chase for the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain going to blink out as Playhard looks for the Time Walk. He's actually going to avoid a Zeus ultimate with that Time Walk. So pretty well played by the Void there. But unfortunately, Jabra Ramos has no such time walk ability and is going to end up dying as uh, the Storm Spirit actually kills off the Void. Going straight into the back lines after joining the fight, Yamate was respawning in just a matter of seconds after that death since he was sitting on so many Bloodstone charges. Unfortunately, didn't catch that on camera, but Yamate going in like a shot. That's G-Guard coming away with 0 and 3 of this advantage, and even though their laning stage went pretty poorly, they're playing incredibly well. Arcanus just haven't been able to find a super well orchestrated fight for the longest of times. If you take a look at that, <laughs> the little ticks on the bottom of the map, it's all red. It's all G Guard getting these kills, the tower destructions. Uh, really, nothing major has happened for Arcanus. There was a disruptor kill, a Zeus kill, but that was more than 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it's uh, really looking pretty bad for them.
I have no idea how you get back into this game if you're Arcanus. I think you just hope for the miraculous team fight. Uh, but as we saw, even though they were able to kill off the Storm, killing off both the Storm and the Bristleback is almost impossible, and let alone the other heroes, as G-Guard can very easily just spread themselves out inside these team fights. Even if Zeus just sits in a base, he's almost going to be sitting on a full refresher soon, um, just 75 gold short of that, or a little bit less than 75 gold. In fact, uh, yeah, there's your refresher. If he just sits in base and drops a double ulti, um, that's Arcanus' health pools down to next to nothing. We still don't have this mech up for the Lich. Jabro Ramos' Midas hasn't paid off, he doesn't get level 16, and oh no. No, Nyx. I have no idea why he was there. He was hunting for kills, going for a desperation move. Um, which is really kind of what he has to do at this point. Just look for support pickoffs, but without having vision, it's so risky. And unfortunately for this time, and for every time in this game, it feels Heinrich has not been able to get that gamble to work out for him. 111 and 1 on this Nyx. It, it just hasn't worked. Oh, Neck going to find a D-Word with the gem freshly picked up by the Earthshaker, although he doesn't have a four staff to get himself down here. Uh, he'll just wait for the blink cooldown, which is more than acceptable for him. Not much that Arcanus can do to punish this. Queen of Pain going to be looking for a refresher orb of her own, unless this is some, like, super next level battle for your Queen of Pain. Uh, this is a good item and all, and uh, should do a lot of damage inside the team fight, but... By itself, I don't think it's going to be enough. They need this Faceless Void to be hitting hard, and at this point, play hard isn't. With just the Mask of Madness BKB and half Maelstrom. At 36 and a half minutes in, that's pretty lackluster as they jump in for the Lich. Storm Spirit going ham. Kills off the bench very easily, and now gets out free. Jumping in. Impale's going to miss. Yamate's home free, however. He has a BKB and 15 Bloodstone charges. This Storm is really just going to town. G Guard, after that pickoff, probably aren't going to <clears throat> fully commit to a fight. But they might as well just beg Arcanus to do something about this Bristleback. Heinrich going to come in with Mana Burn and drain a lot out of Ben. Really, that's the most useful thing this Nyx Assassin's been doing for Arcanus is offering Mana Burn onto the Bristleback. It is really annoying. Two shots of that Mana Burn and you're gone. And uh, even though your spells cost so little mana, you want to be spamming that almost constantly. And that's just not happening. Alrighty. So, G Guard, they've been repelled for the time being, although. It's probably not going to be for long. They should just wait out for the next Roshan, which is going to be coming out in a matter of seconds. Arcanus, at this point, I think it's start or time to start looking for some desperation smokes and looking for just team fights that you can find on your own footing. Oh, which really has been a problem for them. G Guard's initiation has been really spot on. Oh no, not Nyx again! <sighs> Jeez Louise, Ned, stop it! Uh, Winter comes in to steal the kill with an ultimate, but uh, even so, he can't leave the base anymore. He's less than a support next at this point. He can blink in an impale, that's about it. And then after the fact, he just instantly dies. There's a sentry in range of this Observer Ward from the Dire, but Arcanus can't even D-Ward that. The Earthshaker knows that the Ward is there, and the Creeps aren't going to... Oh, actually, they are in range of there. That's pretty interesting, actually. Um, that was pretty far away. Nets currently maybe in a bit of trouble. He's going to blink away, however, and there's nothing they can do to chase. We're still waiting on that refresher orb for the Queen of Pain. A double Sonic Wave. Um, as the Sonic Waves have been very good this game, could turn some fights in their favor. They're going to pop the Lincolns, Yules her up, and then drop her into Kinetic Field Stag Storm. The Fisher is going to be off the mark, and defensive swap coming out from Whiskers is going to be enough to save her. The Disruptor, however, maybe not so lucky. He's going to get a glimpse back onto the Queen of Pain, but the ultimate kills him off. And then he'll just say thanks for the glimpse. The Queen of Pain is back closer towards mid. Unfortunate for G-Guard, maybe getting a little too greedy with their two supports, but that's what's going to get Arcanus back in the game. But they're going to need a lot more of that. Chronosphere going to catch out Ben as he tries to focus down Yamate. That's just not working. The Chronosphere is just not good enough. Ben trying to get focused down. They are going to get to the front of the Warhog and try to focus him down. He is still going to survive for a little bit longer. Get some cool damage out. And he already has the Aegis as they were doing Roshan. In the meantime, his supports were dying up top. He's going to come back with a vengeance. The Bristleback is now on the front lines. They're going to drop a lot of damage into Mighty Odin. Mighty Odin not feeling too mighty now. Especially he gets Enchant Totem out of his blink. Heinrich now going to get focused. Although uh, Spike Carapus is going to buy him a little bit more space. Ben's just going to pop the BKB and go straight into him. Heinrich dropped into a hot pot of G-Guard heroes. The Storm Surge goes straight into the base. The Time Walk away is going to save Playguard for the time being. Dodging the damage coming out from the Ball Lightning. Uh, but Yamate, there's nothing that Playhard can do to get him out of his base right now. He's currently solving up, trying to be as efficient as possible when he's reach ending up. It's just not happening. Melee Barracks is falling in bottom, and G-Guard looks like they've done it. Yeah, just one too many fights going their way. 
Arcanus couldn't find anything. Their team fight inside the mid game, although it was pretty scary, wasn't scary enough. Play hard, looks like he's going to end up dying. Gets a handful of backtracks. Time walk away. He dodges the Zeus ultimate. Or no, there's not enough mana for Zeus ultimate. And uh, well, then he comes in and drops it anyway. Storm Spirit is going to end up getting that kill. So uh, as much as Winter tried to get that, uh, not going to pay out for him. But GG comes out for Arcanus. And, uh, for good reason, too. G Guard have been looking really dominant inside all of these team fights. Although their laning wasn't the greatest, they can afford to do some victory echo slams. GG well played, and uh, we'll be going on towards the next games in this series. G Guard are currently playing King of the Hill. Let's see if they're going to be able to uh, stick on that position. And, uh, well, let's see if Arcanists are going to be able to claim their prize of $500 for just one best of three. I mean, you can't really ask for much more there. Alrighty. Next game, I should have Danily on the mic, and uh, we should have a co-caster here too. And uh, we'll be back shortly on Gosu TV 1 with the next game of the series, so don't go anywhere. More Dota coming your way.